Okay, so some of you guys may have watched my recent video on why I'm still sticking with my 11 inch 2018 iPad Pro instead of the brand spanking new M1 iPad Pro. And in making that video, I began to think of the many ways my use of the iPad Pro has evolved with time. From initially having just this iPad with a Apple Pencil to adding on a smart keyboard to finally replacing it with the magic keyboard we have today. And without doubt, the Magic Keyboard has been the most revolutionary update of them all. A must-have accessory for anyone who is even remotely looking at an iPad Pro or a Air. However, iPad OS is not the best at complementing its utility. Having used the keyboard for over 12 months now, I wanted to share with you guys some of the workarounds and tweaks that you can potentially make to get the most out of what is really otherwise an amazing combination. Now, quick disclaimer, I am using this keyboard with my 11 inch 2018 iPad Pro, but do know that most of the content in this video will apply to the later and larger models of the iPad Pro and iPad Air. So first off the bat, let's talk about split screen mode with Safari. One of the really annoying things that I found when using split screen in particular on the smaller 11 inch model is that Safari does not know how to reformat its output of websites for half a screen. Often, I would find websites would have awkward placements of pictures and text in this mode, making it overall a very frustrating experience. As a remedy, I suggest going into settings and changing the page zoom of Safari to 85%. This provides a good balance of fitting in websites for split screen mode, whilst also not allowing the text to become too unreadable when using it in full screen mode. If you use Chrome, this is a non-issue. It will automatically scale websites for split screen mode but I have found that Safari leads to better battery life, which is why it's my preferred browser of choice here on the iPad. Another quirky thing about iPads still to this day is that some apps just aren't formatted for this type of device. Take our beloved Instagram. Despite having the second largest social media user base globally, for some absurd reason, Instagram still does not have a proper iPad formatted app. To get something remotely usable, this is what I've done. Go into Safari, enter the Instagram website, click share in the top right and click add to home screen. This creates a shortcut in the home screen that looks identical to the app. Use this shortcut, log in and voila, you have created something that Instagram programmers still to this day have struggled to make. The Magic Keyboard has a number of different shortcuts that I've grown fond of. First off, if you're new to iPadOS with this keyboard, press and hold the command key in various apps and it will bring up a list of shortcuts. Have a look, see what you like, and start to use these shortcuts because they're just such an easy way for you to maximize your efficiency when using tech like this. Some examples for me include Command and H to go to the home screen, Command Tab to switch back to the previous app, Command Q to close an app, which can also be used when holding down Command Tab and just having a look at the various um, apps that are there. Command Shift 4 for screenshots with markups and Command Shift 3 for just plain old screenshots and command spacebar for spotlight search, which is great for when you want to quickly search for an app without going to home or to quickly search the web for something. The trackpad has a few nifty tricks that you should also be aware of. For one, the simplest way for me to initiate split screen mode is by using the trackpad to simply swipe down at the bottom edge of the iPad to bring up the dock and then clicking and dragging the desired second app over to whatever side I want it to be in for split screen mode. If I want to change one of the splits to a different app, I just repeat the same process. And something that's really useful and something that I didn't even realize I could do until recently is that if you want to split screen with an app that isn't in the bottom dock, use Spotlight to search for that app. And when it finds it, click and drag the app to put it into split screen mode. Finally, to get rid of the split, just click and drag the middle bar all the way out to the side. Now, I tend to not use slide over at all, but if that's something you are into, drag and drop a app on top of an app, but not to the side where it would usually activate split screen. Multiple apps can live in slide over, which can be handy. For example, you could just have a little sidebar of things like Spotify, Notes, and maybe a Chrome website. Switching between the different apps within slide over is just a matter of using three finger swipe left or right. The reason why I'm not a huge fan of this though is that it's so easy to activate split screen mode when trying to get rid of slide over because it requires you to click and drag the top of the sidebar off to the side where the usual activation area for split screen mode is. This is less of a worry when just swiping away with your finger, but with the touchpad, it's an absolute nightmare. Finally, a really useful feature in the Files app now is that you can scan documents by just clicking and holding in a blank space. 
They also will bring up the option for you to use the camera to scan any document direct into the files folder. The only caveat is that you unfortunately cannot do this in multitasking mode. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you did. And make sure to comment below. Let me know if you have come across any other cool tips and tricks whilst using the Magic Keyboard. But until the next one, see ya. Thank you.